Oh, let me make sure that I can change this. Hello, welcome to our presentation. My name is Bethwell Hamala and Jorge Munoz. We present on negative chronicent parameters in non-magnetic BCC-based intermetallic ion titanium at high pressure. In our presentation, our outline involves uh, the background on ion titanium. Then we shall show the latest dynamics of ion titanium from first principles calculation, as well as the experiments. We shall proceed to show the phonon dispersions and the parameters anomalies, then electronic structure and orbital charge transfer, followed by asperity and the M5 phonon modes, and finally, the conclusions. We point out that the electronic structure of B2 ion titanium is very similar to that of cobalt titanium and nickel titanium. We also show the existence of a pseudo gap between um, the energy states of these materials, whereby in ion titanium, the Fermi energy is located at the pseudo gap that has a region of lower energy states. Looking at cobalt titanium, we see the Fermi energy moving at slightly higher energy states. And the nickel titanium is the one that we can see that um, um, the Fermi energy are slightly lower but higher than ion titanium. The cubic structure for this nickel, titanium, cobalt, and iron, we see that the nickel titanium is stable above 340 Kelvin, and that of cobalt is stable above 40 Kelvin, while our iron titanium is stable up to the melting of at about 1600 Kelvin, which is actually higher and it make this material actually have a very good applications and become more interesting at these high temperatures. Here, we also show that the Fermi surfaces shown in our first diagrams, ABC, are actually uh, having the Fermi surfaces at temperatures elevated uh, greater than 750 Kelvin. And these, these results are showing us that some experiments have energy enough to move a band just above the Fermi energy uh, producing the thermally driven electronic topology transitions. This preferentially decreases the energy of the transverse acoustic MF5 modes as we can see that happening in our band structures as at the point slightly above uh, the Fermi levels. Next, we show our results on our left is having our calculations, which are showing our nucleus, not in the nucleus here, but the calculations of the phonon density of states as a function of energy for ion. As we increase the pressure, we point out that these peaks are shifting to high energy points. And we also point that also 
we do have the small displacements observed uh, with our density functional theory calculations. Similarly, this behavior is observed in our measurements, which we obtained from N neutron and elastic resonant uh, laxis, uh, B, which you obtained from N raxis um, in diamond anvil cell. And in this case, we want to show that at a pressure of zero gigapascals, we do have this peak at the point that is almost similar as that one that is shown in our calculation. That is somewhere near 30 milli electron volt. And these peaks also are shifting towards high energy points. Now, um, pointing out on our results of the pressure as uh, a function of volume, we see that when we fit our data in the batch Milligan equation, we observe that these experimental results and functional results seem to have some discontinuity at the regions near 0 0.94. This plot of discontinuity is actually being seen uh, between, is seen between 0 0.94 and 0 0.95 as shown in our calculations that are also similar to the experiments. So there seem to be the discontinuity in the average for non-energy and the derivatives of the bulk modulus at this volume fractional range. So we did a more uh, detailed study of the phonons. So this is the, so the uh, phonon dispersion curves. And we have uh, four different volumes. So the lighter green is that higher uh, pressure or reduced volume. And the darker one is at uh, 1.0. So at the uh, equilibrium volume. And yes, most of them increase in energy when compressed, but not all. So we have uh, these bands at um, the X point, uh, so dispersions, and at the end point, that the ones at X essentially don't change in energy when the volume is increased, and the ones at M change by very, very little. And there are uh, other branches that act uh, unexpectedly. So we calculated the mode specific Gruenaisen parameter as a, a different uh, compressions. So this one is uh, 0.975. So this is the, the value of the volume in between the data points that we used to calculate it. And this is 0.95. And this is 0.93. So over here we have some issues because uh, they're very, getting very close to zero. And if you divide by zero, then you get, um, or you shall not divide by zero. Uh, the main thing that we have to notice here is that at 0.97, you know, most of the modes are around three. That's their granite parameter which is pretty typical for a material. But at this compression at 0.95, they actually become negative. So we have large number of phonons that are negative. And in particular, you know, this, these are the ones at X and the ones at M that we pointed out before. But then as you keep compressing, they go back to being positive. So this is a kind of um, interesting, unique behavior. So we looked at the band structure. The Fermi surface remains the same. So there are essentially no changes at the Fermi surface when 
the volume changes. So this is likely not due to an electron phonon interaction. Uh, there are uh, these changes at the X high symmetry point. So this band over here is mostly, uh, it is E gene character. And this one over here is uh, T2 gene. And as the pressure increases, the separation between them increases. So, and this tells you about the asymmetry uh, of the crystal. So we looked at the electronic density of states. So this is at the iron side and at the titanium side, both with the T2G and the EG electrons. And uh, we also looked at the, at the S electrons. So the main changes over here are in this region the, around negative two. Uh, we can see it over here to around um, negative three or so. We integrated these curves to get the charge in the, at the iron and titanium sites, the charge in the T2G and the EG orbitals. So what we observe is that this is for the case of iron with compression. So as we increase the pressure, reduce the volume in this direction, the T2G electrons, they decrease the charge in the T2G uh, orbitals, but the charge in the EG uh, electrons increases. In the case of the titanium, both of them increase. So these are coming, oops. All right, sorry about that. This uh, increasing the charge is mostly coming from the localized, but also from the X electrons. So here we can see that the charge in the S orbitals decreases, the charge in the D orbitals, so both of the, the T2G and the G increases. And we see the same effect for uh, at the titanium side. And it's actually more marked at the titanium side. So the scale over here uh, in both cases is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3. So the slopes are, uh, are comparable. And so you can see that the slope for the, in, the increase in the, uh, the electrons at the titanium side is pretty large. So the asphericity, is the ratio of the charge in the T2G orbitals uh, and the EG orbitals. So this is related or it is correlated to the stability of the cubic structure in different materials. For example, yttrium is not stable pretty much ever in the cubic structure, it just doesn't have enough uh, electrons. So it goes to the to hexagonal phases, zirconium is stable in a hexagonal phase at low temperature, but at high enough temperature, um, it becomes uh, BCC. And niobium and molybdenum are always BCC. So for the materials that we presented at, that we talked about at the beginning, iron titanium, cold titanium, nickel titanium, nickel titanium is a shape memory alloy and has the phase transition at around 340 Kelvin. Cobalt titanium will be at around 40 and uh, iron titanium is always stable, right? So uh, we can see that as the asphericity decreases in this series, the cubic structure becomes uh, more and more unstable. So when we uh, reduce the volume, increase the pressure in iron titanium, we see that the asphericity does decrease. So you know, if we continue compressing, it is likely that at some point it will, it will go into a hexagonal structure. Although we try a pretty high pressure of 55 GPA and you know, it's still not even close, but at some, at some pressure it might. Um, 
But for the titanium sphericity, there is a kink or an elbow, which we'll call it over here. So this, plat, this part is kind of flat. And then uh, over here starts going down. Over here, it didn't go. Um, it was started, it, it was going down um, at kind of a regular uh, rate, so constant slope. Uh, but then we have this uh, region in which weird things start to happen to the asphericity at the titanium site. So this is the M5 uh, phone mode. This is the displacement pattern. And these are secondary neighbors in the in a, in a um, body center cubic uh, base structure. And so the, when this atom moves in this direction, uh, it's, these forces are exerted by the, others, by the other atoms on it. And so it will, the result is that it will move it back. So this is a uh, stable mode. So if there is no change in the, in the force constant, when we reduce the volume, that is because there's probably more charge uh, in here. So in the direction of the secondary neighbors, there is more charge that is uh, screening the motion of the ions one, four, and one and two, and so on. And so those uh, orbitals that are um, mostly along the direction of the secondary neighbors are the EG. So this is consistent, you know, that as we compress, the charge starts to move uh, to this region. And at, at least for a pressure range, it doesn't uh, increase and it actually decreases the, uh, the force constant as uh, with, with compression. So in conclusion, we have a volume dependent uh, anomaly that we can call it that was detected in several of the mode specific and parameters in iron titanium upon compression. And these are particularly strong at the M and the X high symmetry points. And they are supported by experimental measurements. Upon compression, there is a charge transfer from the delocalized electrons and also from the electrons in the uh, S orbital. They move towards the D orbital. And then once they are there, it depends on whether they are in the iron site or the titanium site, uh, if they go into the EG uh, or T2G. So for uh, titanium, both the EG and the T2G uh, increase the charge in the EG and T2G. For iron, the T2G shows a decrease, uh, sorry, a, a, an increase, but the EG shows a decrease. So it is likely that the charge transfer affects the frequencies of the phone modes, particularly the transverse acoustic M5 and produces this Grunison parameter anomaly. So thank you very much.